Hit it for 150! <laughs> oh my god! You gonna get it? You gotta get it. <gasps> no, you was only oh. one! So bad, bro. I'm about to not, I'm about to just uninstall. Epic Games demonstrated unparalleled mastery in keeping Fortnite fresh and engaging through a series of innovative seasons, each introducing a new theme, fresh mechanics, in-game events, and an ever-expanding lore that kept players on their toes. From cross-IP collaborations, including Marvel, Star Wars, and various pop culture icons, to in-game concerts with world-renowned artists, Fortnite transformed from a game into a full-fledged social experience platform. But how did some of these positives turn into negatives, and vice versa? The adventure of Fortnite Battle Royale starts with its creator, Epic Games. The seed was planted in 2011 when they first revealed Fortnite as a co-op PvE title, Save the World. However, it wasn't until July 21st, 2017 that the world got to play. Yet, it was the audacious shift to the Battle Royale genre that launched Fortnite into the stratosphere of gaming fame. Fun fact, Fortnite was unveiled just three weeks later after coming up with the idea. Fortnite Battle Royale was released September 26, 2017 while well in the midst of the growing VR genre with games like PUBG and H1Z1. <laughs> However, it was the building borrowed from Save the World in the free-to-play tag that engaged more people to play, which is two weeks after its release it surpassed Save the World's 1 million player record with 10 million. PUBG actually sued Epic Games months later after Fortnite's release, accusing them of stealing their Battle Royale formula, but dropped it soon after without saying anything probably due to the parent company swooping in to stop it. With Fortnite still new, streamers and YouTubers began to play and exploit the game, showcasing features like the double pump and rocket riding, all while sharing these clips over social media, growing the game even further. As player numbers soared, it became imperative for Epic Games to shift their focus on the battle royale genre and devise a monetization strategy. Consequently, one month after the launch of Battle Royale, on October 26, 2017, Epic Games rolled out Fortnite Season 1. The season-based model provided a structured way to monetize the game through the Battle Pass, a system where players could pay to unlock exclusive in-game content, releasing alongside the item shop. This got people to shell their money out in the case of FOMO, fear of missing out. And with that reaction from players, this allowed Epic Games to continue to monetize and update their game weekly while keeping the same model growing their game even further. If you needed any more signs of Fortnite not slowing down, Season 2, which released in January 2018, overtook League of Legends and Twitch viewers and became the most viewed game on Twitch, with only one month later Fortnite surpassing PUBG and active player count as well. But of course, records didn't stop there, as when Ninja played with Drake during Season 3 in March 2018, amassing over 636,000 viewers also became the most viewed single Twitch stream. By June, Fortnite already had 125 million players, and on June 12, 2018, Epic Games held the Celebrity Pro-Am event. The event was met with much enthusiasm from fans and participants alike, with streamers and broadcasts reaching large numbers of viewers worldwide. Notable figures from various industries including gaming, music, sports, and film participated, creating a diverse and appealing mix for fans. This event successfully captured the spirit of the game, highlighted the importance of interactive entertainment, and contributed to the growth and popularity of Fortnite as a cultural phenomenon. During the next few months, things were the best they could have been for Fortnite. Playground Mode, basically the first version of Creative Mode, released just two weeks after the Pro-Am and was the first sandbox mode where you could practice your builds or make content for YouTube. 
Live events emerged, captivating audiences with a fresh wave of FOMO, simultaneously establishing live in-game events as a significant marketing strategy, which other games also took after. And in August, Fortnite hit yet another peak of 78.3 million players in just that month. However, like many popular games, it has faced challenges that some may characterize as a coming downfall. Although, it's important to note that Fortnite remains a popular and profitable game. There are several factors that contribute to the perception of Fortnite's downfall. You know how I mentioned the weekly updates earlier? Well, with that obviously came its pros and cons. Like when they got rid of the double pump and buffed SMGs to shift the meta and help new players close the skill gap. Fortnite started a pivot towards accommodating newer and casual gamers, possibly because more experienced players dedicated numerous hours to honing their skills in playground and creative modes, establishing a pattern that would continue. This shift also had the inclusion of powerful items and features such as the overpowered Infinity Blade and Planes in Season 7, followed by the introduction of mechs in Season 10. Additionally, the implementation of implementation. skill-based matchmaking in Chapter 2 Season 1 was also part of this strategy. While these changes aimed to level the playing field and generate social media buzz, they also alienated some long-term players, contributing to the decrease in the game's popularity during Seasons 8-10. to 10. However, the end of Season 10 saw its highest ever peak in interest with a black hole event, which accumulated in Fortnite going offline for 36 hours, because if you're not playing it, you're probably looking it up. This stunt led to a new high in search volume as players in the broader public were drawn to the mystery and spectacle of the event. Despite this peak in attention, the interest did not sustain itself. Just two weeks after the launch of Chapter 2, search volumes for Fortnite dropped again. In wake of these fluctuations, Fortnite's new model centered around transforming the game into a social experience. This strategy aimed to retain engagement by emphasizing the game's social aspects over its competitive elements. And of course, Fortnite being persistent, it started to pay off. Somewhat. Also in wake of Chapter 2 was the introduction of more collab-heavy skins and now Battle Passes 2. The Travis Scott Astronomical Concert and Galactus event were two of the most notable in-game collab events in Fortnite history, each renowned for their massive player engagement. The Astronomical Concert drew an incredible number of participants with over 12.3 million concurrent players attending the concert live in-game, and somehow just months later the Galactus event topped the concert with 15.3 million concurrent players, which is still a record for the platform. Epic was aware that during Season 10 their game was dying down and competitive players were shifting to other titles. Without collaborations, the focus could have stayed on the original competitive elements, yet at the expense of the casual gamer's interest. The game's universe would have been less rich in varied themes and lacked the appeal of character crossovers. Marketing efforts might have centered on the gameplay improvements like it was, over the allure of new partnerships. Moreover, the game's social dimension could have been subdued, affecting how the community interacts and the overall feel of the gaming experience. The success of collaborations was evident as it led to a revenue increase from $3.7 billion in 2019 to $5.1 billion in 2020. A little over six years after Fortnite launched, Fortnite broke its all-time one-day player record by going back in time. The launch of Fortnite OG, a special season which brings back the game's original Chapter 1 map, drew an incredible 44.7 million players on Saturday, November 4th, which between them racked up 102 million hours of play. What's brought all these players back? Well, partially nostalgia from 5 years ago. Fortnite OG recreates the game as it was, with the exception of sprinting and mantling, during July 2018 in Chapter 1 Season 5, Tilted Towers and all. The rest of the OG season took an accelerated run through the rest of Chapter 1 at the rate of one season per week. After the OG season ended, Epic needed a way to keep most of these players engaged, so with Chapter 5 came an update which would pretty much change its course forever. It's no secret that so far the Battle Royale part of Chapter 5 is pretty bad, so Epic pulled another tactic to keep most of their players, and they released three modes. Lego Fortnite, which is basically Minecraft, Rocket Racing, basically Mario Kart, and Festival, which is literally Rock Band. These modes would further prove the new path of Fortnite, a social game, like I said before. Okay, who likes Fortnite? <laughs> 
Fortnite's revenue has only ever gone up since 2019, and interest in the game has had its highs and lows. But with everything that I mentioned, they keep on avoiding death to come out on top.